Armenian language. The Armenian language is an Indo-European language spoken primarily by Armenians. It is the official language of Armenia. Historically being spoken throughout the Armenian highlands, today, Armenian is widely spoken throughout the Armenian diaspora. Armenian is written in its own writing system, the Armenian alphabet, introduced in 405 AD by Mesrop Mashtat. Armenian is an independent branch of the Indo-European languages. It is of interest to linguists for its distinctive phonological developments within that family. Armenian exhibits more satimization than sentimization, although it is not classified as belonging to either of these subgroups. Some linguists tentatively conclude that Armenian, Greek, Phrygian, and Indo-Iranian were dialectally close to each other. Within this hypothetical dialect group, Proto-Armenian was situated between Proto-Greek, Centum subgroup, and Proto-Indo-Iranian, Satum subgroup. Armenia was a monolingual country by the 2nd century BC at the latest. Its language has a long literary history, with a 5th century Bible translation as its oldest surviving text. Its vocabulary has historically been influenced by Western Middle Iranian languages, particularly Parthian, and to a lesser extent by Greek, Persian, and Syriac. There are two standardized modern literary forms, Eastern Armenian and Western Armenian, with which most contemporary dialects are mutually intelligible. Although the Armenians were known to history much earlier, for example, they were mentioned in the 6th century BC Pahistun inscription and in Xenophon apostrophe s 4th century BC history, the Anabasis, the oldest surviving Armenian language text is the 5th century AD Bible translation of Mesrop Mashtits, who created the Armenian alphabet in 405, at which time it had 36 letters. He is also credited by some with the creation of the Caucasian Albanian alphabet. In the Anabasis, Xenophon describes many aspects of Armenian village life and hospitality in around 401 BC. He relates that the Armenian people spoke a language that to his ear sounded like the language of the Persians. W. M. Austin, 1942, concluded that there was an early contact between Armenian and Anatolian languages, based on what he considered common archaisms such as the lack of a feminine gender and the absence of inherited long vowels. However, unlike shared innovations, or synapomorphies, the common retention of archaisms, or simplesiomorphy, is not considered conclusive evidence of a period of common isolated development. In 1985, Soviet linguist Igor M. Diakonov noted the presence in classical Armenian of what he calls a Caucasian substratum identified by earlier scholars, consisting of loans from the Kartvelian and Northeast Caucasian languages. Noting that Hura or arshan speaking peoples inhabited the Armenian homeland in the second millennium BC, Diakonov identifies in Armenian a Hura or arshan substratum of social, cultural, and animal and plant terms such as Alax and slave girl, Hur. Alala e hen, Kavsi, Urart. Su, inland, C, Alt camel, Hur. Altu, and Njur apple tree, Hur. Hinzuri. Some of the terms he gives admittedly have an Akkadian or Sumerian provenance, but he suggests they were borrowed through Hurrian or Urartian. Given that these borrowings do not undergo sound changes characteristic of the development of Armenian from Proto-Indo-European, he dates their borrowing to a time before the written record but after the Proto-Armenian language stayed. Loan words from Iranian languages, along with the other ancient accounts such as that of Xenophon above, initially led linguists to erroneously classify Armenian as an Iranian language. Scholars such as Paul de Lagarde and F. Mola believed that the similarities between the two languages meant that Iranian and Armenian were the same language. The distinctness of Armenian was recognized when philologist Heinrich Hubsman, 1875, used the comparative method to distinguish two layers of Iranian words from the older Armenian vocabulary. He showed that Armenian often had two morphemes for the one concept, and the non-Iranian components yielded a consistent pi pattern distinct from Iranian, and also demonstrated that the inflectional morphology was different from that in Iranian languages. The hypothesis that Greek is Armenian's closest living relative originates with Holger Pedersen, 1924, who noted that the number of Greek-Armenian lexical cognates is greater than that of agreements between Armenian and any other Indo-European language. Antoine Maillet, 1925, 1927, further investigated morphological and phonological agreement, postulating that the parent languages of Greek and Armenian were dialects in immediate geographical proximity in the Proto-Indo-European period. Maillet's hypothesis became popular in the wake of his Esquisse, 1936. Georg Renata Solta, 1960, 
does not go as far as postulating a proto graeco armenian stage, but he concludes that considering both the lexicon and morphology, Greek is clearly the dialect most closely related to Armenian. Eric P. Hamp, 1976, 91, supports the graeco armenian thesis, anticipating even a time when we should speak of Helleno-Armenian, meaning the postulate of a graeco armenian proto-language. Armenian shares the augment, and a negator derived from the set phrase proto-Indo-European language, never anything or always nothing, and the representation of word initial laryngeals by prothetic vowels, and other phonological and morphological peculiarities with Greek. Nevertheless, as Fortson, 2004, comments, by the time we reach our earliest Armenian records in the 5th century AD, the evidence of any such early kinship has been reduced to a few tantalizing pieces. Greco Armeno, Arian is a hypothetical clade within the Indo European family, ancestral to the Greek language, the Armenian language, and the Indo Iranian languages. Greco Arian unity would have become divided into Proto Greek and Proto Indo Iranian by the mid 3rd millennium BC. Conceivably, Proto Armenian would have been located between Proto Greek and Proto Indo Iranian, consistent with the fact that Armenian shares certain features only with Indo Iranian, the Saddam change, but others only with Greek. S.H. Graeco Aryan has comparatively wide support among Indo Europeanists for the Indo European homeland to be located in the Armenian highlands, the Armenian hypothesis. Early and strong evidence was given by Euler's 1979 examination on shared features in Greek and Sanskrit nominal flexion. Used in tandem with the Graeco Armenian hypothesis, the Armenian language would also be included under the label Aryan O Greco Armenic splitting into Proto-Greek slash Phrygian and armeno aryan ancestor of Armenian and Indo-Iranian. Classical Armenian, Arm, Grabar, attested from the 5th century to the 19th century as the literary standard, up to the 11th century also as a spoken language with different varieties, was partially superseded by Middle Armenian, attested from the 12th century to the 18th century. Specialized literature prefers Old Armenian for Grabar as a whole and designates as classical the language used in the 5th century literature, post-classical from the late 5th to 8th centuries, and late Grabar that of the period covering the 8th to 11th centuries. Later, it was used mainly in religious and specialized literature, with the exception of the revival during the early modern period, when attempts were made to establish it as the language of a literary renaissance, with neoclassical inclinations through the creation and dissemination of literature in varied genres, especially by the Makatarists. The first Armenian periodical, Azdarar, was published in Grabar in 1794. The classical form borrowed numerous words from Middle Iranian languages, primarily Parthian, and contained smaller inventories of loanwords from Greek, Syriac, Arabic, Mongol, Persian, and indigenous languages such as Urartian. An effort to modernize the language in Baghdad Armenia and the Armenian Kingdom of Cilicia, 1114th centuries, resulted in the addition of two more characters to the alphabet, and, bringing the total number to 38. The Book of Lamentations by Gregory of Narek, 951-1003, is an example of the development of a literature and writing style of Old Armenian by the 10th century. In addition to elevating the literary style and vocabulary of the Armenian language by adding about well above a thousand new words, through his other hymns and poems Gregory paved the way for his successors to include secular themes and vernacular language in their writings. The thematic shift from mainly religious texts to writings with secular outlooks further enhanced and enriched the vocabulary. A Word of Wisdom, a poem by Hovhannes Sargavak devoted to a starling, legitimizes poetry devoted to nature, love, or female beauty. Gradually, the interests of the population at large were reflected in other literary works as well. Constantin Yersinkatsi and several others even take the unusual step of criticizing the ecclesiastic establishment and addressing the social issues of the Armenian homeland. However, these changes represented the natura of the literary style and syntax, but they did not constitute immense changes to the fundamentals of the grammar or the morphology of the language. Often, when writers codify a spoken dialect, other language users are then encouraged to imitate that structure through the literary device known as parallelism. In the 19th century, the traditional Armenian homeland was once again divided. This time Eastern Armenia was conquered from Qajar Iran by the Russian Empire, while Western Armenia, containing two-thirds of historical Armenia, remained under Ottoman control. 
The antagonistic relationship between the Russian and Ottoman empires led to creation of two separate and different environments under which Armenians lived and suffered. Halfway through the 19th century, two important concentrations of Armenian communities were further consolidated. Because of persecutions or the search for better economic opportunities, many Armenians living under Ottoman rule gradually moved to Constantinople, whereas Tbilisi became the center of Armenians living under Russian rule. These two cosmopolitan cities very soon became the primary poles of Armenian intellectual and cultural life. The introduction of new literary forms and styles, as well as many new ideas sweeping Europe, reached Armenians living in both regions. This created an ever growing need to elevate the vernacular, Ashkar Habar, to the dignity of a modern literary language, in contrast to the now anachronistic Grabar. Numerous dialects existed in the traditional Armenian regions, which, different as they were, had certain morphological and phonetic features in common. On the basis of these features, two major standards emerged. Both centers vigorously pursued the promotion of Ashkar Habar. The proliferation of newspapers in both versions, Eastern and Western, and the development of a network of schools where modern Armenian was taught, dramatically increased the rate of literacy, in spite of the obstacles by the colonial administrators, even in remote rural areas. The emergence of literary works entirely written in the modern versions increasingly legitimized the language's existence. By the turn of the 20th century, both varieties of the one modern Armenian language prevailed over Grabar and opened the path to a new and simplified grammatical structure of the language in the two different cultural spheres. Apart from several morphological, phonetic, and grammatical differences, the largely common vocabulary and generally analogous rules of grammatical fundamentals allows users of one variant to understand the other as long as they are fluent in one of the literary standards. After World War I, the existence of the two modern versions of the same language was sanctioned even more clearly. The Armenian Soviet Socialist Republic, 1920 1990, used Eastern Armenian as its official language, whereas the diaspora created after the Armenian Genocide preserved the Western Armenian dialect. The two modern literary dialects, Western, originally associated with writers in the Ottoman Empire, and Eastern, originally associated with writers in the Russian Empire, removed almost all of their Turkish lexical influences in the 20th century, primarily following the Armenian Genocide. Proto-Indo-European voiceless stop consonants are aspirated in the Proto-Armenian language, one of the circumstances that is often linked to the glottalike theory a version of which postulated that the voiceless occlusives of Proto-Indo-European were aspirated. In Armenian, the stress falls on the last syllable unless the last syllable contains the definite article or, and the possessive articles and, in which case it falls in the penultimate one. For instance, but and. Exceptions to this rule are some words with the final letter, in the reformed orthography, and sometimes the ordinal numerals, etc., as well as, and a small number of other words. Modern Armenian has six monophthongs. Each vowel phoneme in the table is represented by three symbols. The first indicates the phoneme's pronunciation in the International Phonetic Alphabet, IPA. After that appears the corresponding letter of the Armenian alphabet. The last symbol is its Latin transliteration according to ISO 9985. The following table lists the Eastern Armenian consonantal system. The occlusives and affricates have a special aspirated series, transcribed with an apostrophe after the letter, P, T, C, K, but C. Each phoneme in the table is represented by three symbols. The first indicates the phoneme's pronunciation in the International Phonetic Alphabet, IPA, after that appears the corresponding letter of the Armenian alphabet, and the last symbol is its romanization according to ISO 9985, 1996. The major phonetic difference between dialects is in the reflexes of classical Armenian voice onset time. The seven dialect types have the following correspondences, illustrated with the TT series. Armenian corresponds with other Indo-European languages in its structure, but it shares distinctive sounds and features of its grammar with neighboring languages of the Caucasus region. Armenian is rich in combinations of consonants. Both classical Armenian and the modern spoken and literary dialects have a complicated system of noun declensions, with six or seven noun cases but no gender. In modern Armenian, the use of auxiliary verbs to show tense, comparable to will and he will go, has generally supplemented the inflected verbs of classical Armenian. Negative verbs are conjugated differently from positive ones, as in English he goes and he does not go, 
in many tenses, otherwise adding only the negative to the positive conjugation. Grammatically, early forms of Armenian had much in common with classical Greek and Latin, but the modern language, like modern Greek, has undergone many transformations, adding some analytic features. Classical Armenian has no grammatical gender, not even in the pronoun, but there is a feminine suffix, ui. For example, yujutsik, teacher, becomes, yujutsui, female teacher. This suffix, however, does not have a grammatical effect on the sentence. The nominal inflection, however, preserves several types of inherited stem classes. Nouns are declined for one of seven cases nominative, uxakin, accusative, haikakin, locative, nergoikin, genitive, serikin, dative, trakin, ablative, vakarikin, or instrumental, gorsiakin. Animate nouns do not decline for locative case. Verbs in Armenian have an expansive system of conjugation with two main verb types in Eastern Armenian and three in Western Armenian changing form based in tense, mood and aspect. Armenian is a pluricentric language, having two modern standardized forms, Eastern Armenian and Western Armenian. The most distinctive feature of Western Armenian is that it has undergone several phonetic mergers, these may be due to proximity to Arabic and Turkish speaking communities. For example, Eastern Armenian speakers pronounce as, th, as, d, and, as a tenuous occlusive, t. Western Armenian has simplified the occlusive system into a simple division between voiced occlusives and aspirated ones, the first series corresponds to the tenuous series of Eastern Armenian, and the second corresponds to the Eastern voiced and aspirated series. Thus, the Western dialect pronounces both, and, as, th, and the, letter as, d. There is no precise linguistic border between one dialect and another because there is nearly always a dialect transition zone of some size between pairs of geographically identified dialects. Armenian can be divided into two major dialectal blocks and those blocks into individual dialects, though many of the Western Armenian dialects have become extinct due to the effects of the Armenian genocide. In addition, neither dialect is completely homogeneous. Any dialect can be subdivided into several subdialects. Although Western and Eastern Armenian are often described as different dialects of the same language, many subdialects are not readily mutually intelligible. Nevertheless, a fluent speaker of one of two greatly varying dialects who is also literate in one of the standards, when exposed to the other dialect for a period of time, will be able to understand the other with relative ease. Distinct Western Armenian varieties currently in use include Hamshetsi, spoken by the Hemshin people. The dialects of Armenians of Kesib, Latakia and Shisar al Shukar, Syria, and Jar, Lebanon, and Vakfil, Samandag, Turkey, part of the Suidia dialect. Forms of the Karen dialect of Western Armenian are spoken by several hundred thousand people in northern Armenia, mostly in Gimri, Artik, Akarian, and around 130 villages in Chirag province, and by Armenians in Samske Javahedi province of Georgia, Akulkalaki, Akaltsi. Nigachevan on down Armenians speak another Western Armenian variety based on the dialect of Armenians in Crimea, where they came from in order to establish the town and surrounding villages in 1779. Western Armenian dialects are currently spoken also in Gavar, formerly Norbeyazay and Kamo, on the west of Lake Savan, Aparan, and Talan in Armenia, Mush dialect, and by the large Armenian population residing in Abkhazia, where they are considered to be the first or second ethnic minority or even equal in number to the local Abkhaz population. The Armenian alphabet, or, is a graphically unique alphabetical writing system that is used to write the Armenian language. It was introduced around AD 405 by Mesrop Mashtats, an Armenian linguist and ecclesiastical leader, and originally contained 36 letters. Two more letters, O, and, F, were added in the Middle Ages. During the 1920s orthography reform in Soviet Armenia, a new letter, capital, was added, which was a ligature before plus, whereas the letter was discarded and reintroduced as part of a new letter, which was a digraph before. This alphabet and associated orthography is used by most Armenian speakers of the Republic of Armenia and the countries of the former Soviet Union. Neither the alphabet nor the orthography has been adopted by diaspora Armenians, including Eastern Armenian speakers of Iran and all Western Armenian speakers, who keep using the traditional alphabet and spelling. Armenian is an Indo-European language, so many of its Proto-Indo-European descended words are cognates of words in other Indo-European languages such as English, Latin, Greek, and Sanskrit. 
This table lists only some of the more recognizable cognates that Armenian shares with English, more specifically, with English words descended from Old English. Source, Online Etymology Dictionary. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.